now live. Um, first of all, welcome Zero Project family. I am delighted to have you all here. We have over 3,300 participants, which reign from all over the world at this virtual global conference committed to disability inclusion experts. What I really want to underline is that conference like these, especially virtual conferences like these, could not happen without great partners such as the NVOK. It is really these trusted partner organizations which bring together these wonderful formats and without their encouragement, without their coordination, without all the resources and time and effort they have put in, all of this and especially our conference would not be possible. So all I can really say is a big, big thank you to the NVOK, especially to um, also Markus Rafa who has uh, supported this partner channel session from day one and who has been very supportive of uh, the Zero Project conference. And uh, thank you, Marcus. Thank you, Mfogi, again. And uh, with, her, with these words being said, um, I look forward to your partner channel session. Thank you very much, Robin. Hello and welcome, everyone. Thank you for joining our panel. Yes, we are here for the MVG, the Austrian Licensee Agency for Tobacco and Stationery Shops. We enable individuals with disabilities to become entrepreneurs. Yes, you heard correctly and no worry, at least don't run away now. Today it's much more about than about tobacco shops. We will show you a really unique and powerful system that's able to change destinies. Now, first, it's a pleasure for me to introduce my guest to you, Philipp Renger. Welcome, Philipp. Hello, Helga, and everybody, welcome. Philipp runs a traffic since 2013. And uh, it's also a pleasure to introduce to you my colleague, Markus Raffa. He is a successful entrepreneur. His enterprise is developing technical helps for blind people. And he is inclusion and CSR manager of the MVG. Welcome, Markus. Thank you very much, Helga. Welcome and hello to all participants in our session. I'm very glad to be here and to talk about in the next hour um, about this great topic, entrepreneurship and disabilities. But first of all, I would like to give you some uh, operative notes about this session. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please note that this session is recorded. Uh, we need this record for the Zero Project uh, web page and uh, I hope that you are also okay with this. Thing. Um, I'm very happy also to have Cornelia Rosenkranz here. She is the live sign language interpreter in this session and interprets um, all that we talk in Austrian sign language. So if you uh, want to see uh, Cornelia Rosenkranz permanently, please pin his uh, picture in this uh, session into your uh, watch um, scene in this in the in the teams. Um, another interesting uh, topic is we have if you are watching uh, from the Zero Project uh, website, we have already the direct Teams link of our session. In there, on the one hand, you find this link in the chat on the right uh, bottom of the of your screen. If you want to discuss with us, and I really invite you to do so, please just click to the link and come straight into this team session so uh, we can talk together in the next hour with you. Um, we have also an uh, an live translation and subtitling in Teams. Uh, you can activate this on the top of your uh, Teams screen and uh, there you can activate uh, live uh, subtitling. So ladies and gentlemen, I'm very welcome to have the support here of uh, Christian Zehetgruber. He is also an 
um, entrepreneur with disability for many, many years and an expert in this field. I'm very too happy to have you here. Hello and welcome, Christian Sehetko. Yeah, good morning. Okay, so Helga, um, for all participants, Helga is the head of the Western region of MVG and all of its uh, tobacco stations. She will guide us through the first uh, half time of our session and she will give a great overview of the platform of MVG and how the MVG is supporting people with disabilities to become an entrepreneur. Helga, the stage is yours. Thank you, Markus. Yes, Syria Project this year is all about employment and disabilities. We say employment is important, but entrepreneurship with disabilities is even better. We would like to take you with us so that you see our contribution to that vision and how we work. So at the beginning, let's briefly shed light on the initial situation on the market and how our platform evolved. Austria's market consists of three categories of products. First, there are the free consumer goods. In this field, we have competition freely of all market participants. Then there are drugs. They are strictly prohibited. The third field consists of sensitive recreational cons consumer goods. These goods can be legally purchased, but the market is strictly regulated. The core of this specially market division reaches back in history until 1784. From founding on, the care for war invalids and war widows was an essential basic idea of the tobacco monopoly. In 1979, civilly disabled individuals were added to the group of preferential persons. By joining the European Union, Austrian's monopoly law was reformed and today's structure arose. Every part of the monopoly, except of the trade, was given into private hands. The Republic of Austria founded an independent site to manage the trade with sensitive consumer product and called it MVG. So, where are we now? Nowadays, we can say that every fifth day we make a person with disabilities an entrepreneur. And this is the framework we provide. In Austria, you can take over a traffic either by inheriting or belonging to the group of preferential persons. That means traffic owners have the possibility to inherit their shop to children or their spouses if certain legal framework conditions are in place. In any other case, the MVG provides a fair evaluation of the price of a shop and guarantees a fair transition for the leaving and the new shop owner. The MVG checks the structural environment and if we come to the conclusion that a new shop owner is able to be economically successful, the traffic will be publicly advertised. The candidates have to belong to the group of preferential persons. In order to count among this group, a minimum of 50% disability is a prerequisite. Furthermore, the candidates must be suitable and able to run the business. All applicants who have submitted their documents in full come to an independent committee. This has to select the neediest candidate. This means the person with the lowest financial income and the worst chances in the labour market has to be chosen. After selection, the MVG starts the training process with the candidate. 
a separate academy was founded for this purpose. There, the new traffic owners learned the complete theory they use for operating their shops. In addition to that, each participant completes internship days in defined training shops. Here, experienced entrepreneurs give their practical knowledge to their new colleagues. This is where long-standing networks are created. If the candidate now has overcome the last hurdle, an examination, he receives a civil contract from us and is now member of the biggest inclusive network of entrepreneurs with disabilities. I hope you wonder now how this network is composed and under what condition it works. We call our retail system a platform. This platform consists of different sites. First, there are the customers. Here we can say that in Austria are around 1.5 million smokers. Then there are our retailers. We call them Trafik. They buy their goods from wholesalers, which are together with the industry, another side of the platform. Furthermore, the Ministry of Finance is the side that collects tobacco tax. The next side is the Ministry of Health and Social Affairs, and we regard market media and market focused service companies as system providers in our platform. The MVG is responsible for the platform and each member has a well operating business plan in it. We are deeply convinced that mutual trust between all participants is the most important key for success. At this time, 2,303 traffic owners run their own business. The size and the structure of network of stores correlates with the health trend. The less demand, the less tobacco focused jobs. This due to the fact that we do not just ensure the economic survival of the shops, but we are also committed to a health policy mission. That means, and this is really now important, our mission is not to sell as much as possible of tobacco products, but we have to make sure that the local care with this product is guaranteed. Otherwise, the population would try to supply illegally. For the health point of view, we want less supply, higher prices and more domestic income than free market would provide. The sale of tobacco to teenagers under 18 years is strictly prohibited. MVG has installed a program that regularly tests if the tobacco-based jobs comply with these guidelines. Our social policy goal is to give as many individuals with disabilities the chance to become entrepreneurs as possible. Last year, we could increase the percentage from 63.4 to 53.8%. The percentage is increased every year. So today, we have 1,240 individuals with disabilities who run their own shop. The network also makes a great contribution to regional employment. The shops employ 19,000 people, even in times of crisis. And the traffic is a cultural asset that often is a place to meet and to talk. For the entrepreneurs, we guarantee local market without competition in their direct neighborhood. So shop operators work in a protected environment. The social based focus of our system is unique and also the president of the biggest organization for individuals with disabilities in Austria pays respect to MVG's way of working. 
Mr. Svoboda says, we would need more professional statuses which promote the basic principles of self-determination, accessibility and equal opportunities like the MVG. Now for me, it's time to give the stage to Philipp Renger and to introduce him to you, we prepared a short video. Hello, I am Philipp. I am 44 years old. I am married, father of two sons and owner of a tobacco store. Since 1999, I am handicapped because of multiple sclerosis. Yeah, I made an apprenticeship in Austria for cooking and catering. Afterwards, I worked on cruise liners all over the world, been at the military service and moved then to Frankfurt to join a F&B trainership in the hotel industry. Suddenly, in 1999, I couldn't feel my legs anymore. So I went to the doctor and the doctor transferred me immediately to the University of Hospital in Frankfurt and there I got the diagnostic of multiple sclerosis. I was shocked. It wasn't that easy. But I said to myself, I don't give up and I will go on with my career. So I worked in the hotel industry, moved from Frankfurt to Abu Dhabi in the UEA, afterwards to Berlin. And in 2007, I was food and beverage manager in a big five-star hotel in Berlin, but totally overworked. Yeah, this ended up in a burnout and I was not able to work for one year. After that, I said to myself, I have to change my life. So I went back to Austria and started to work as a taxi driver. One day, a friend of mine came and he said, hey, there is a possibility for handicapped people to apply for a tobacco store in Austria. So I did it and I worked further on as a taxi driver and one day I got a call and they asked me if I'm still interested to work or to run a tobacco store. And I said yes. And so again, my life changed. I got all back, my dreams, my hopes, my perspectives, my independence. And now I have a really good life. I'm leading a tobacco store. I'm in a management position again. It's really a good, good system in Austria that handicapped people can apply for a tobacco store and get back everything they lost. Yeah, Philip, it's good to have you here. When you look nice back and uh, you remember the situation when you got the call from MYG that you have the possibility to run your own traffic, what did you think? What were, what were your thoughts in, in this moment? Yeah, incredible. If I remember back, I could cry now because it was unbelievable. I got everything back I lost. Yeah. Um, what would you say? Which are the highlights of your daily business? What do you like most? Yeah, that you meet so many people from from yeah different different uh, stage of lives. Everything you you meet uh, doctors, you meet uh, workers. Even our president in Austria is one of my guests because uh, he is just living next door, you know. And so you meet so much people and it's just fun. Yeah, it's really great. And um, your, your wife is working with you in your traffic. Um, is uh, traffic also um, a good chance to combine family and uh, working world? It is, yes, yes because in the year we opened uh, this uh, tobacco store, our first son uh, gets birth. And so she could stay at home and uh, care about our son and I could work. And now after eight years, we are also able to have employees. So it is definitely work-life balance is okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Philip, for sharing um, your life and um, yeah, and your thoughts with us. 
it's it's good to have us to have you here and now um, I hope you all learned a little about us and I hope I was able to explain our system well enough. Now we would uh, have uh, your questions, we ask you to tell us what you think and we are looking forward to exchange ideas with you. We wonder maybe if you see potential, potential market for inclusive, in, in, inclusive retail systems in your home country. Um, and we are open for your ideas now. Do we have a question? So participants may, uh, on the one hand, uh, just unmute themselves to ask a question, or you can also uh, lift the finger. Teams has a function to do so or write your uh, message in the chat of Teams or even on the uh, website of Zero Project of the live stream. Um, at the moment, we don't have a question. Maybe we do all the, the questions at the end and, and continue with you, Markus. And, and yeah, um, can, so. maybe people can think about having a question and write us and we will do the discussion at the end of the program. Yeah. Hello, excuse me, am I unmute? Uh, yes, you are. Hi, oh, hi Walter. Thank you very Hello. much. Uh, this is Walter from uh, Carryall, Hong Kong. Um, so actually, I appreciate it so much on this topic because actually, uh, when we are t trying to develop um, the services and actually we are also thinking about how to develop a academy for uh, training people with different kind of disabilities and special needs become an entrepreneur. So um, actually, I heard about the great story, and I mean, I know more about how to train a person with disabilities to become a successful entrepreneur, because actually that is the, the biggest question here in Hong Kong for a lot of different training programs. Eventually they train, but the people with disabilities may not eventually become an entrepreneur, and even though some of them making quite a bad business uh, because of lacking of business sense and some social worker training, may not uh, tap into too much closer to the market as well. So um, thank you very much for this. Yeah. Um, we think um, the, the key to success here is to, kind, uh, to combine theoretical uh, things with practice. Um, at the academy, um, the new uh, traffic owners learn Theory, a theory that um, is uh, from the from the um, very um, different kinds, and then they go to to their uh, colleagues into a training shop, and here the, the really practical things come come to uh, language. Um, so how. Uh, what should uh, what should stand uh, in in my traffic? How can I um, talk to, uh, to uh, our customers and many uh, other um, directions? Did I answer that well for you? Or uh, yes, uh, thank you very much. I think the theory and plus the uh, practice practice would be great. And um, actually, in the academy, do you have any categories on the courses or actually how long would the training take place before they go out to, to try out on making business or actually running business? Um, the academy um, runs for uh, 10 days and um, then there is about a month um, for learning the theory and for a time to, to um, be with the colleagues in the training shops. Then there starts the examination where we see um, that the participant um, has really uh, the knowledge to run the shop now. And then uh, it starts. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah. We have one more question from Mr. Morandel. Yeah. Hello from Innsbruck, Austria. Um, <laughs> of course, I know the MVG quite well, but what I wonder is, is there something like, uh, let's say, a catalog of best practice examples, especially also when it comes to which technology to use, which equipment to use for 
different uh, kinds of uh, employees with disabilities, so which cashier system works well if you have a, a visual impairment, when you have a mobility impairment, etc. So is there already this knowledge base there? Um, I would say that this knowledge is more of a practical way. There, there's no um, theoretical um, catalogue, um, but uh, the network between the traffic owners is very important because they give their experiences to the new colleagues and they will explain what's working best for them. Okay, but also, so do you also investigate into new uh, technologies, uh, for example, into the accounting system, etc., to see, okay, which are really developed very well and are very easy to use, or how does this work? Um, there are participants um, for these systems um, which have a, a, a long term um, of experience. Um, in, in the last time, there were no um, new um, services uh, on the market. And um, you're right, so maybe it's, it's a real good idea to um, make a catalogue and see what are uh, very important assets we need. Okay, thanks a lot and lots of success for this really cool model and also for finding new, uh, new areas of, uh, of, uh, of business. Thank you. Okay, for the moment we don't have questions, so, oh, maybe Mr. Zuin, one more time? No? <laughs> okay, so uh, Markus, I think we can continue and, and maybe at the end we have some more questions. Thank you. Absolutely. Um, thank you, Trude, for the moment. The um, key word, uh, I think uh, Matt, Mr. Morandell always gave it to us, to expand this model. So this is what we want to do now. Uh, thank you to Helga and Philip to show us this great platform. Um, our goal is now to expand it to all different branches all over the world to uh, make a network of people with disabilities who are already entrepreneurs, but also who want to become a successful entrepreneur. Ladies and gentlemen, join us now um, to fund such a network. We are straight at the beginning and I'm very happy that I have uh, Christian Zehetgruber with us here, um, who is uh, an disabled entrepreneur with experience for years and I ask him to just spend some words about himself and about his career. Very warm welcome and hello to Christian Zehetgruber. Yes, hello, good morning and uh, warm welcome from Vienna. Yeah, I um, want... Uh, Christian, sorry, we, we don't see you in the picture. Okay, is it better now? Is it? Uh, could you not see me now? Not till now. No, no, not till now. But maybe you continue to speak. Maybe it yeah. doesn't work at the moment. Um, yes, uh, short words about me and about my company, Vidavis. I am Lovishan. I have a juvenile macular degeneration since birth. Uh, as a child, I have seen approximately 10 to 15 percent of vision. And now I have 1 percent of vision. I work in the field of assistive technology since 1990. I started translating software from like Zoom text from English to German. Also, I started uh, developing speech synthesizers in German. So this was my beginning in the assistive technology group. In the year of 2000, I started as CEO of the VDBs. And I uh, realized that uh, there are sometimes uh, problems that other people don't believe that uh, people with disabilities can lead a company. After 21 years, I, <laughs> I'm very happy uh, mm -hmm. it works. And uh, this is uh, also a thing I want to show you and I want to tell you. Mm -hmm. Now our business is, sir, uh, has 30 employees nine of them are visually impaired or blind and uh, it works and uh, we have seen in the 
past that quite a lot of visually impaired and blind people are willing to get uh, their own business, to start their own business, to get entrepreneur, but sometimes they have not enough self-esteem or they need some help. And what we want to do is that we help them, that we uh, avoid them for the same mistakes we made uh, and they should make new mistakes because mistakes are good to develop your business, but uh, never made the same mistakes. And uh, this is what we want to open. And Marcus will now tell a little bit more and go a little bit more in depth of this uh, new strategy and the new vision. Absolutely, exactly. Um, I think this is a great success story, uh, starting as a visually impaired person with an internship in a company and now uh, being the CEO uh, of the much bigger company than it has been before, really great. So ladies and gentlemen, um, I will give now a short uh, overview about the status where this new network for people with disabilities who want to become an entrepreneur is at the moment. Afterwards, very short about the structure. And then we want to discuss the three main uh, questions around this network. So what is the status? I can tell you we are straight at the beginning and because of this, we want to use this event now to get your uh, thoughts about it, uh, your experience, and you want to bring your mind in this network. And we also want maybe get you as a funding partner of this network. So we even do not have a name at the moment. So maybe we should start uh, at the beginning of our discussion with 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 uh, thoughts about the, the name of such a network of this so what should be the structure of so, of such a network we think um, it's very important to know each other within this network so that you can uh, share your minds with the other uh, members you uh, have the possibility to talk to the other members uh, just what Christian said to get this experience out of the others. So we think there should be national or maybe also regional uh, groups or networks itself. But in the 21st century, um, and we see it now here, we are very glad to have people here from all over the world in this session. It's very important also to connect over the borders of, of countries. So maybe there should be also a mother network in international um, who supports in connecting people of the national networks to other uh, people all over the world. So let's go to the three main questions uh, around the network, we think. So, uh, Christian already talked a little about, about this. Why should such a network exist? He mentioned the fact uh, we should uh, help each other, connect to each other, sure. But I think another big aspect should be to change the minds in the society. So we should show people there are also individuals with disability who can run a business very successfully. And we want to break these barriers out there. So Christian, uh, maybe just share a story with us uh, where you uh, met skeptical people who thought about, yeah, um, you are disability, the people with disability, how should you run your business? Yeah, I often heard, I can imagine that someone with low vision can make uh, a, a company like yours. Uh, you have to be very often uh, in other countries, you have to overview, have an overview about the complex database. And I heard quite a lot of such things. And I said, if someone can it, then I can it. If I can it, other people would uh, do this uh, job. Yeah. So we had 
great experience in adapting and scripting with screen readers, for instance, databases, complex databases. So we find also solutions for tobacco stores to get uh, uh, speech uh, feedback. Um, and also, yeah, you can also show it on a braille line, of course. So if uh, you have a positive mindset, yeah, then you can do quite a lot. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, absolutely, that's right. And um, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, very important to, to change the minds in the society because we think um, it should be quite normal uh, in the society if people have a disability and others do not have. So um, that brings us to the next question about the target group. So what should be the focus in the field of the target group of this international network. Uh, it's clear it's about people with disabilities who would like to be an entrepreneur or who are already entrepreneur. But what is about people without disabilities? Should they take part and have a part in such a network? What do you think, Christian? Of course, I, I think the best way is to be an inclusive network. Everyone who has a positive mindset, who can help you, can bring experience into this network. Uh, people which have also uh, yeah, worked together with blind or visually or other handicapped people should bring their experiences into our network. And also humor is a very important thing. <laughs> That's that's very good. So, uh, exactly uh, that is what it should be about. It should not only be a, a working place or a working network. Um, it should be also yeah making fun. So we know people with disabilities have several challenges in your daily life, uh, and we also know that entrepreneurs doesn't matter if they are disabled or not also have several challenges in your daily life and so uh, why not bringing these both topics together and um, support each other to do this. So I myself was very happy to um, have the help to have the help of Christian when I run my own business. Um, I am also visually impaired with just a very low residual vision and I was very happy to uh, have the possibility to talk to Christian about business topics, about impairment topics, and a lot of uh, anything else what 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 brings the daily life. So, yeah, the last of the three main topics we already talked a little bit about it is what should members bring in this network. Yeah, we mentioned they should be open-minded. They uh, should be enthusiastic to change the minds of other, uh, of the society. They should, uh, they should um, be, be aware of, of changing thoughts about helping other people and much more. Um, do you know a main aspect, Christian, uh, which is the most important thing of these of these aspects uh, that people members should bring in this network. I think the goal of this network should be it's absolutely normal that disability uh, uh, people with disabilities be entrepreneur. I think that's it is not nothing. Uh, uh, it's it's normal. It's just normal to do it. Yeah, and um, we should help people which are not uh, on the not uh, sure that they get enough self-esteem to do it just start do it that's, that's absolutely right i just wanted to highlight at the end of our presentation that this network is open for all kinds of disabilities all over the world so it should be a great uh, network that supports people within this. So Christian, thank you very much for your uh, um, experience. Thank you. And now we, as I mentioned, want to go in an open discussion. Just Markus, we have questions. Yeah. We have questions to you. Very good. Um, there is one time Mr. Morandel 
who uh, we got to know before, he asked, how was it the first time when you went to a bank to ask for a loan? Um, yeah, so we, when I started my uh, to run my business, I knew that um, it would be wasting time to go to a bank and asking for a loan because it's absolutely, um, there is absolutely no possibility to start a business. We had an uh, to to get a loan from the bank. We had an idea when we started to build a shoe that uh, helps people while their movement to detect obstacles and warn them. We had a short prototype uh, which uh, doesn't e didn't even had I think two percent of the functionality that has it now, and no bank would finance this. So. But we live in a in a in an age where there is also a lot of private money out there. So we started to look uh, for started to looking for investments, investors, private people who uh, believe in this idea and to support it. And uh, we combined it also with public support. So in Austria, we have a very good research. Uh, field and uh, there's a lot of public support to um, make technological research with impact. Uh, yeah, Christian, maybe the question also to you. Yeah, what I realized um, when a blind woman started uh, business in a massage institute, um, mm -hmm. she has really big problems to get money from the bank because they don't believe that she could uh, run, uh, run their own business. Yeah? But um, then um, she was really clever because uh, she made then a contact to me and I showed the bank, this was uh, really in the near of, of our company, uh, how they can do their database, how can they manage their uh, bookkeeping and so on. And then she got the money. So it was really the problem that the uh, people in the bank institute have no idea how that could work. Um, I, I want to give this question uh, shortly to uh, Philip. I know when starting a uh, traffic, uh, you also need a lot of money to, to start it. How was it in your situation? Well, I had luck. I had luck uh, because I contacted a bank which knows my father-in-law and my father-in-law had a business and uh, so it was no problem for me. But if I wouldn't know my father-in-law, I wouldn't get any cent. Definitely not. Yeah. And uh, uh. they also want to have a guarantee and so on. And you don't get a guarantee that you will have a good business. Yeah, absolutely. Tode, um, do we have yeah, we have more questions. Gulden Mitter asks us, does such an organization, MVG, exist only in Austria? And we have some more questions then. So you have to yeah. be shorter. We try to keep it short. Helga, do you know, is there any other... Uh, MVG system out there? Um, in, in Europe, um, we have systems that are a little similar, but um, it's not uh, exactly what we do because um, we try um, to give uh, the, the traffic uh, that's not inherited to 100% to, to individuals with disabilities. And uh, I don't think that you find uh, something um, like that in, 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 in Europe. Mm -hmm. I know um, type, uh, sim not, not the same, but in this field uh, types, for example, uh, in, uh, in Espanol, there are the ONCE, there is the ONCE, it's a, um, governmental institution or in other words the government gave them the license of lottery of, of lotto of yeah being a millionaire and they support people with disabilities uh, especially visually impaired people um, to give jobs to them to yeah support them with this income mm -hmm. 
We have then Ulrike Glösmann. She has a question, one short question. Are there some more experiences, especially with women with disabilities in becoming an entrepreneur? Because the statistics say there is still something to do. Yeah, that's that's right. So we, um, I think we can also um, take this question out uh, of the field of disability because women uh, in the field of the family and so on, they they um, yeah have have several more challenges to become an entrepreneur. I know uh, of, of women who. Uh, try to start his own business. Um, maybe Christian, do you know some some women? Yeah, it's a, a very low number. That's that's yeah. clear, and uh, I think that, sh that should be a, a very important topic in our network uh, to yeah uh, get more uh, women mm -hmm. into uh, uh, entrepreneurship. Yeah. I totally agree to this, yes. And then we we, we still have uh, Mr. Rombaut. Maybe you, you might want to turn on the microphone. Yeah, yeah. I think it's too much to read it. <laughs> okay. Uh, no, I was just uh, saying that uh, I've mentioned that there is a, a kind of initiative, uh, a similar initiative in, in Belgium as well. And I've linked to uh, to the website of that initiative. But um, a global, a one of my remarks was uh, I'm involved in within uh, NeuroWorks. I'm a member of the board of directors over there, and this is an association, a Canadian-based association, focusing on the the employment uh, of people with an autism spectrum profile. And it is also a global organization, but but global means that uh, the I, I would say the the financing of a global organization is very difficult because the U.S. is looking uh, to to the EU, EU, mm -hmm. and the other way around. So if you are uh, knocking on the door of the European uh, institutions, they are saying, OK, global, it's fine. And what is doing uh, the US uh, in this initiative uh, in respect to, uh, to financing this, uh, this initiative and the other way around? So it's very difficult to find, to find uh, financing for a global initiative. And I'm convinced uh, mm -hmm. Of, 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 of the importance that it is global because there, there are no uh, barriers between, uh, the, 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 the borders are not uh, there for, yes. for, for entrepreneurs with a disability, yes. let's be clear about that. So I'm convinced about the uh, scope of a global, uh, that you, you need to, to focus on a global organization yes. But um, yeah, we experienced, for example, we had the intention within that association to exchange, to share information, knowledge, and so on, uh, in a more structured way via platform and so on. But at the end of the day, I have to admit that um, in practice, we organize a conference once in a once a year, once in, in two years, in fact, the last conference was in London. And the real face-to-face -face exchange of, of, of people is the most valuable, uh, yeah, was the most valuable in, in, in this organization till now. Yeah, um, thank you. Maybe, maybe also Ernst Koreska wants to turn on his uh, photo and microphone because... Just short, short words to, to his yeah. statement. And um, thank you very much also to, for the link to the Belgium organization. I think it's uh, very important uh, what we already mentioned that these national groups should connect on a global global uh, field. Yeah, and to the financing topic, sure, um, every organization needs money to survive, and maybe also there should be the private sector and um, partner. Too. So maybe there are successful entrepreneurs also without disability who want to, to enforce this topic. There should be maybe a possibility for them to participate, what we already mentioned too, and to bring also money in this network. 
Ernst. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, hello. Um, hi. Um, I'm also um, um, employee of the MVG, and um, in, I believe that uh, one more very important topic is for new entrepreneurs or people who want to become that um, to get the real uh, the right informations to start and the financial topic is a very important topic and therefore we in Austria we have a system of supporting them and perhaps in other countries there also exist such programs and to make this uh, public and is a, could be a very interesting and important topic for such a network in my opinion. Yeah. Thank you Ernst, absolutely. The good thing of this uh, network could also be that we learn from other countries and other countries learn from the system of Austria and I think uh, what the speaker before said is the uh, private uh, contact to each other is very important but uh, it should be a summary of all good uh, stories and then put it into other countries. Yeah, I, I agree, I agree. Um, we have another question. Four minutes left and uh, we have some questions but to answer later via mail and maybe you finish and inform the people how to contact us. Sure, so um, we thought uh, in the before the session that maybe we cannot answer all the questions but um, we want to stay in touch with you and to answer also all questions and also we want to give you the possibility to participate in this new network so please all out of here please send us an email um, when you want to participate yeah. The email address is dialogue at mvg.at. You see it on the screen. Uh, I spell it D I A L O G at mvg.at. Tell us on this email address if you want to participate in the network, if you are an entrepreneur with disability who want to become an uh, or, or an individual with disability who want to become an entrepreneur if you want to support this network if you know an uh, abroad organization that maybe does the same anything else if you have questions about mbg just inform us so thank you very very much to all participants in this session thank you very much again to Cornelia Rosenkranz who integrated it. Thank you to the technology and also to Zero Project, to Christian, to Helga, to Philip, to our guests. Thank you very much, Helga. You have the last word of our session. It was great to be here. Thank you. Yeah, I can say it's really interesting with you and uh, we take with us your positive energy we hope we stay are we stay connected and we can exchange ideas even in future and thank you to everyone uh, have a good time and stay safe thank you very much uh, thank you have yeah thank you bye bye